Well, hello there to my beloved grade 10 classes, grade 10 St. Thomas and St. Ignatius. This video is a summary of our first quarter topic. So I hope you listen attentively because this is a review in preparation for your first quarter exam. So I'm hoping that you who is watching this will be having a passing score in the exam. So let's start. Now, when we say general term of a sequence, this is a formula for us to get any missing term in a sequence. Okay, so for example, we have this problem. What is the fifth term of the sequence whose nth or general term is given by a sub n is equal to 2n plus 5? So, paano ba natin sasagutan ng problem na to? Okay, so given yung general term, we are going to substitute 5 in place of n. So, this is the general term. Isa substitute lang natin si uh, 5 in place of n and solve for the result. At kung ano man yung result na yun, yun na ang ating magiging fifth term. So, the fifth term in, in this problem is 15. Okay, so that is the general term of a sequence. We are simply substituting. Okay, so we also talked about this too. Okay. These are the major types of a sequence. We have the uh, arithmetic sequence and we have the geometric sequence. Kung arithmetic sequence, um, we are adding a fixed number. We are adding something. In this case, yung ina-add natin dito ay 2. Okay? And we call that number the common difference. Sa geometric sequence kasi we are multiplying a fixed number. Okay, so kapag ka arithmetic sequence, it is addition. Kapag ka geometric sequence, it is multiplication. And the number that we use to multiply in the geometric sequence is called the common ratio. Okay. Okay, so now we have two different formulas for us to get any term of a given sequence. Of course, kapag ka arithmetic sequence yung involve, ito ang gagamitin mong formula. Kapag ka naman geometric sequence ang involve, you are going to use this formula. Okay? So, basta yung mas mahabang formula, that is the formula of arithmetic sequence. Okay. So, let's say we have this problem. Find the 20th term of the sequence 3, 7, 11, 15. Before you substitute the given in the formula, tingnan mo muna kung anong klaseng sequence yung given. Kasi it can be arithmetic or it can be geometric. So obviously naman yung sequence na given dito ay arithmetic. Kasi we are adding 4. nag a ng 4 dito. So arithmetic sequence to. So kapag ka arithmetic sequence, ang gagamitin na formula ay ito. Okay? So... To do that, we are just going to identify the first term and the common difference. And then since we're looking for the 20th term, it replace natin si n ng 20. So we are going to do that and simplify. And so the result is 79. So the uh, 20th term is 79. Now, if we also have this, find the seventh term of the sequence 5, 15, and uh, 45. So, um, obviously, we are multiplying 3. Okay? Nagmumultiply tayo ng 3 dito para makuhi yung next term. But we are asked to get the seventh term. Okay? So, geometric sequence, shall we are going to make use of this formula. Okay? So, to do that, we are going to identify the first term and then the common ratio. To get the common ratio, that is a second term divided by the first term. So, 15 divided by 3, yun po, kung saan nakuha yung 3 na yun. And so, since we are looking for the seventh term, replace n with 7. And then, we simplify... And then, so we have here 3,645 as our answer. Okay? So, kapag ka arithmetic sequence, that is addition. Geometric sequence, you are multiplying a number. Now, we have here arithmetic mean and a, a geometric mean. Kapag ka arithmetic mean, ito yung kapag ka may missing term in between two given terms. So, kapag ka iisa lang, Ang missing term, it's easy kasi we're just going to take the average of the two given terms. So, 1 plus 7 divided by 2. The missing term or the term in between these given terms, I. 
4. Okay? So that's how you are going to get the arithmetic mean. Kapag ka isa lang, or tatlo, or kapag lima ang missing in between. Okay? Kapag ka naman geometric mean, for us to fill in the blanks, we take the square root of the product of the two given terms. So square root of 7 times 63. Okay, so we multiply what's inside. The answer is 441. And if we are going to extract the square root, the answer is negative 21 or 21. So positive or negative 21. So there can be two possible answers here. Paano naman kung yung bilang ng missing terms in between ay even, meaning 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So walang, um, walang midpoint or walang middle term talaga. So even siya. For you to get the missing terms in between, you're going to make use of the formula. So kapag ka-arithmetic mean, gamitin mo ang formula ng arithmetic sequence. Okay? So you have to identify the sixth term and the first term. Gagamitin mo ang dalawang yun. I-substitute mo siya sa formula ng arithmetic sequence and then masusold mo doon yung common difference. So after mo na ko yung common difference, you are going to add the common difference to the first term for you to get the next terms. So ganun po. 15 dapat to, I'm sorry. 15 plus 6 is 21. 21 plus 6 is 27 and so on. Okay, so um, paano naman kapag ka geometric mean? Of course, you are going to make use of the formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. So kunin mo yung fourth term at saka yung first term, you are going to substitute them in the formula for you to get the common ratio. And then after getting the value of the common ratio, you are going to multiply. Multiply it to the first term para makuha mo yung succeeding terms. So, ganun lang po kadali. Next. Now, let's talk about series naman. So, series, when we talk about series, this is adding the terms of a sequence. So, kapag ka arithmetic series, you are adding the terms of an arithmetic sequence. So, given this arithmetic sequence, kapag ka series to, you are simply adding this, the terms together. Okay. Now, kapag ka naman given ang geometric sequence, okay, if you are going to add them, that's what we call the geometric series. When I checked your papers, nalilito kayo kung ano yung gagamitin yung formula kasi marami ng formula na na-introduce, di ba? Imaginin mo ba naman ang ganitong karaming formula? Dagdag mo pa yung formula ng arithmetic and geometric sequence. So, there was a problem on your arithmetic series, okay? And yung ginamit na formula ng iba ay yung formula ng arithmetic sequence. Magkaiba po yun. Kapag arithmetic sequence, you are given a problem na hinahanap mo yung unknown term. Kapag ka arithmetic series, problem yun kung saan hinahanap mo or sinosolve mo yung sum ng terms ng arithmetic sequence. So, S for sum. Okay? Don't Use this to get the unknown term. And vice versa, huwag mo din gamitin yung formula ng arithmetic sequence para makuha mo yung sum. Magkaiba po. So, arithmetic series, there are two formulas. We use this first formula if the last term of the sequence is given. Ito naman yung gagamitin na formula kung hindi binigay yung last term. Sa geometric series naman, we have two um formulas yung unang formula this is for finite geometric series ito naman we have here the infinity symbol this is for sorry that um this is supposed to be infinite i'm sorry salinak man lang din okay so this is for infinite geometric series at magagamit lang natin yung formula na to kung yung common ratio ay um proper fraction okay so next Na-introduce naman sa pinaka-last part ang Fibonacci sequence. So, a Fibonacci sequence is a sequence na kung saan ang ma para makuha yung next term, you have to add the two previous terms. So, let's, for, let's say for example, ito, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and so on. So, ganun pang Fibonacci sequence. And this is very much related to the golden ratio. Huh? 
If you're going to get two consecutive terms of a Fibonacci sequence, let's say 21 and 13, if we're going to get the ratio of this, it will be very close to the golden ratio. The golden ratio is um, approximately 1.62. You should also know how to identify if uh, a given algebraic expression is a polynomial or not. So, ang definition ng polynomial is that dapat yung terms niya ay ganito. Um, a should be a real number and n should be a whole number. Yung a na to is the numerical coefficient and yung n is the exponent. So, in the first one, ito po, x squared plus 3x cubed, obviously, lahat ng terms niya na satisfy yung definition. Yung numerical coefficient nito ay 1, which is a real number, yung numerical coefficient nito ay 3, which is also a real number. The exponent of the two terms are whole numbers. So, walang problema. This one here is a polynomial. Gets po ba? Same is true with the second one. 4x raised to 8 plus pi x squared plus 1. Siguro na confuse kayo dito sa pi. The value of pi is approximately 3.14. And 3.14 is a real number. So walang problema dito. This is also a polynomial. Next, ito naman, 1 over x squared plus x cubed minus 3. So in your activity sheets, almost all of you tag this as PPPP or a polynomial. But this is not a polynomial. Hindi to polynomial kasi if we are going to rewrite the first term, magiging negative yung exponent. So 1 over x squared can be rewritten as x raised to negative 2. Okay? So kapag ka negative 2, hindi kasi siya whole number. Kung hindi whole number yung exponent, then this is not a polynomial. Okay? So that is not a polynomial. Next, x plus the square root of negative 100x. Now, if you are going to look at the second term, kasi neg square root of negative 100, dito pa lang, hindi na siya real number. Kasi we cannot take the square root of a negative number. Okay? So, yung numerical coefficient dito is hindi real number. Doon pa lang, hindi na siya polynomial. So, these two are polynomial. The other two are not polynomials. Now, we also talked about how to divide polynomials, and we have two methods. We have the long division, and we have the synthetic division. So I hope you mastered this, no? Um, long division, the first step is just to divide the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. Whatever the result is, you put it here, and then you're going to multiply the quotient to the divisor. Magiging ganito, and you're going to subtract... And same process ulit, balik ulit sa step 1, and then yun. Hanggang sa wala ka nang ma-bring down. And so what's left is the remainder. So yung synthetic division is just an abbreviated version of the long division. Okay, so kunin mo lang naman yung mga numerical coefficients. And of course, for the device or synthetic device, or kunin mo lang yung value of C. And for you to get that, you equate the divisor to zero, and whatever the value of X is, yun ang magiging synthetic divisor mo. <sighs> okay. So next, the remainder theorem. So ang sinasabi lang naman ng remainder theorem is that if we are given a polynomial, and it's divided by a polynomial of this form, Para malaman natin yung remainder, we are just going to get the value of C here. If you forgot that, you are just going to equate this to zero, solve for x, and whatever the result is, yun yung isa substitute mo sa polynomial na to. At kung ano man yung lalabas na result, eh, yun yung remainder. So, ganito po siya. So, ganun siya. Um, the value of C is 3. And so, I substituted 3 here. And so... The result is 42, and so the remainder is 42. So that's how we get the remainder using the idea of the remainder theorem. Now, what about the factor theorem? Ang factor theorem lang naman, parang sinasabi lang naman dito is that kung ginamit mo yung remainder theorem and then the remainder is 0, then the divisor is a factor of the polynomial. Pero kapag ka 
my remainder, then the divisor is not a factor of the polynomial. So, parang sa problem na to, no? Determine whether x minus 4 is a factor of each polynomial. So, dito, nung sinabsitute natin si 4 sa polynomial, the remainder is 0. Therefore, x minus 4 is a factor of polynomial letter A. Dito naman sa letter B, nung sinabsitute si 4, the, the remainder is 121. So, my remainder siya, meaning x minus 4 is not a factor of this polynomial. Gets po ba? Okay, so now let's have the last one, the rational root theorem. So, ang rational root theorem, this is used uh, for us to get the possible rational roots of a polynomial. So, ulitin ko, ang roots ay mga values or mga numbers kung saan, kung sinabsitute mo sa polynomial, it will have a result of zero. Okay, so... Para magamit natin yung rational root, we have here yung p over q. Yung p is the factors of the constant term. So yung constant term natin dito ay negative 6. Ano ba yung mga factors ng negative 6? Okay, so marami po. So we have positive and negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 3, positive negative 6. So ito yung mga pwedeng i-divide dito na walang remainder. So these are factors. Yung Q naman is uh, the, the factors of the leading coefficient. When we say leading coefficient, yun yung numerical coefficient ng variable na may highest exponent. So yung highest exponent naman dito is 3, and the numerical coefficient is 1. So yung mga factors lang naman ng 1 ay positive and negative 1. So for us to list the possible roots, we're going to divide each of these factors by each of the factors sa baba. So, positive negative 1 divided by positive negative 1, and so on, at lalabas ang mga ito. So, that is the uh, rational root theorem. And um, for us to get the actual roots, we are going to use synthetic division or the remainder theorem. Okay, if we're going to use the remainder theorem, sa kuha tayo ng number dito ay substitute natin sa polynomial. Kung ang lumabas na result ay 0, then yung number na sinubstitute mo ay actual root. Since the degree of this polynomial is 3, then there are 3 roots. Okay, so um, substitute ka lang ng substitute hanggang sa makuha mo yung tatlong numbers na makakapagbigay ng result na zero. If you are using synthetic division naman, kuha ka ng any number, use it as your synthetic divisor, at kapag ka ang remainder ay zero, then you keep that number because that is an actual root. So keep on doing trial and error hanggang sa makuha mo yung tatlong values or numbers na makakapagbigay ng remainder na zero. So yun guys... Yun ang topics natin for the first grading. I wish you luck in your exam. And I'm praying that all of you will have a passing score, if not a perfect score. Good luck and God bless grade 10 sa exam. Bye.